Hi friends, welcome back to the Cripple Chronicles podcast. My name is Becca and I am your host. So, I think it is very good to start off this episode by saying that this was meant to be about accessibility. However, because of my little break that I took from um, not even just posting podcasts, like doing any kind of podcast and stuff, since that little lapse, I realised that two weeks time when I would want to post another episode it is the fourth anniversary of me having my car crash. I am going to try something different again with the format for this podcast episode. I am going to talk about accessibility on the next one so that episode is still going to come out just right now. I'm doing this because that's what my brain wants to do and see if I have the motivation and energy to at least put something out, then fair enough, I would rather do that and just be upfront and honest and say, this is what you're getting now and later on you'll get whatever else because I will get to it. Just, I think I need to do this for me and if you want to listen to this, then... I am very happy to have you along with me on my journey. I don't know if that kind of made any sense. The words started coming out my mouth and then I was like, "Mm, I'm unsure. Anyway, so I said I was going to take a different format with this podcast episode and then I totally got sidetracked. So what am I going to actually do that's different then? Usually when I sit and plan out my podcasts, I have an idea of things I want to talk about and then I sit and I do some little typey typing on my laptop and I make, initially I had kind of a script for me to follow and now I just make a lot of like bullet pointed notes of things that I want to cover, things I don't want to miss out and it's very good to have a structure like that for my brain. However, today I did something which was when I realised the the dates and that the anniversary fell on the day that I would be planning on posting a podcast anyway, I posted on my Instagram story to see if anybody who has been following my story had any questions and I actually only got one response and to be honest, I'm not going to answer the question because um, it was about the person that was in my accident with me and... Um, Maybe that'll come up in, like, the kind of things that I'm going to do today, but I didn't really want to have, like, a specific section of that because I'm not in contact with him anymore in my life, so I actually don't know how he's doing. So I don't actually think I've said what I'm going to do yet. Oh, Simba! (laughs) Simba's just turned my camera, so now I don't know what it looks like. Oh well, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you've got a bit of a different camera angle going on because you are off your nut if you think I'm going to move to change that camera angle because I really can't be bothered. I I I I spent so long setting everything up and doing all of these bits and pieces because I was procrastinating actually getting to record the episode. So now I've started recording, we're not... We're not going to stop ourselves here. I think we're going to have a little guest. I don't know if you can see him. He's very interested in the ring light when it's on. Okay, so third time lucky. What I am going to do today is... Oh, wait. uh, So, Instagram questions. Didn't really get anything there. So, I sat and I kind of thought, what kind of questions would be good for somebody kind of dealing with the scenario that I am like an anniversary of car accident and then I used my good friend chat GPT just bunged a load of context into it and said fire out a few questions that like kind of deeply go into um recovering from this traumatic experience so I then I think I got it to spit out maybe 50 odd questions 
and I went through and I kind of looked and I maybe changed a bit of the wording of them and I just put them in my notes and I didn't answer them. So today I'm going to look at the questions, I'm going to answer them and then I'm going to see how it goes. That's kind of, I'm just winging it today. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I was going to say... <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> Let's just get started. <laughs> Usually when I am recording these podcasts... Root... <laughs> Usually when I am recording these podcasts, I have a little vape handy nearby um, just for a good old hit of nicotine to maybe try and get me through the next 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long I'm going to ramble on for. And usually I obviously cut that out because why why would I leave it in there? But say I just can't, I can't find it and I feel like these are probably some pretty hefty questions where it might just help me a wee bit, but don't know where it is, so we move. Let's let's go for it. So the first question is, how has the journey from the accident where you are now? Oh, ah. So I am starting this off with a, a pretty hefty question, a pretty deep question to be honest I'm not quite sure how good I am going to be at conveying my emotions and putting all of my thoughts into words without actually kind of writing them down first because I find that as a structure that really is helpful for me but this feels kind of more raw I guess so the first question I have down here is how has the journey from the car accident to where you are now shaped your perspective on life? And like I said, that is a pretty hefty question. My perspective on life has has totally changed. Like, before I had my car accident... I had just qualified to be a mental health nurse after going through three years of uni, 2,400 hours of unpaid placement for the NHS and mental health wards, working with some pretty unwell people and a year before that kind of working my ass off in college to get my hires to get into uni because... School was hard and childhood was hard and nursing felt like it was my my purpose in life. Nursing was the thing that got me through for quite a while. I couldn't see a life where I wasn't a mental health nurse because I needed that. Being a nurse meant that I could harness the the good that I have inside of myself and I could help other people. And I really threw myself into it. But even when I finished uni, when I graduated, when I got my first staff nurse position, it didn't feel real to me. It didn't feel like that kind of imposter syndrome, like, how did I get here? Do I really deserve to be here? Like, I'm not a little student nurse anymore. When I go into that ward, I am a nurse and I am in charge of patients' lives. I have a say in whether somebody potentially lives or dies and that is a shit ton of weight to bear on your shoulders like that is massive my first 
few shifts working as a qualified nurse were very tough and they had me questioning, am I doing the right thing? I wasn't doing very good mentally, like I was escaping from all of the feelings that I had going on in my life in very, very unhealthy and harmful ways towards myself because I could pour all of this compassion and love out into other people, but I did not have the ability to turn it inwards and give it to myself. And that is definitely the the biggest change in in me and with my perspective on life because I spent so long throwing myself into nursing and putting all of the weight behind nursing that that was the purpose in my life but going through my accident and all of the things that my journey has thrown at me it has made me realise that I was the purpose all along. I didn't need nursing. I didn't need anything else for me to be able to shine my light into the world in some kind of way. But also how when I held up the mirror that I could shine the light directly back into myself because that's what I needed. And I'm not going to sit here and say that that was instant, that I crashed my car and bam, I am a completely transformed new person. Like, this has been four years of continuous work on myself and I'm so fucking proud of myself to be, oh my God, I can... I can feel it coming already. Like, I have been noticing in the last maybe four or five minutes that I can I can feel my voice shaking and I can feel like the tears are going to come and this is just the first question. I am honestly so, so proud to be the person that I am sitting here today and there was a point in my life where I never thought that I could say that and it would be true I learned that there are a lot of lovable characters characters there are a lot of lovable characteristics about me and A lot of the things that I spent so long hating about myself, I realised that they weren't really my fault. They weren't things to hate. And I've just recently finished some group therapy that I was doing, which was good in the sense of kind of... (sighs) making me realise that a lot of the things that I've been putting into practice over the past few years are the right steps to take because this was a pilot kind of group therapy online class thing that they were doing. And one of the things that we're talking about was self-compassion and kind of turning it into a metaphor of looking after your compassionate garden and Is it really about focusing all of your time on tending the weeds? And I had said, like, Scotland's national flower is a thistle. And a thistle is actually considered by a lot of people to be a weed. But that's our national flower. I mean, our national unicorn is is a... Our national unicorn, our national animal is a unicorn, so, like, not sure that's the best example to make but weeds also bring us joy like as a kid blowing dandelions and stuff like that you get joy out of it and I I don't think that you should be focusing on trying to always remove the negative things in your life because 
I hate that there's like toxic positivity and like I've definitely been um I can't think of the word like I've been guilty of it being kind of like everything has a reason but I do truly believe that in my life looking back that there has been a reason for the things that they have played out in the way that they have. And when I was going through the accident and all of those things in the very initial stages, I would have probably headbutted you a few times if you told me that right now, like, oh, this is all just for a reason. Like, my friend Elle was very good in kind of saying, like, I think there will be there will be a point where you'll look back at this and you'll turn it into something amazing. But that was down to me and everything that I did. And life is just... It's too... It's too precious to waste. It's its too short. I had an experience where I left and I went out the door and I thought I would be back in the space of an hour and in that 20 minutes my whole life changed and that could happen to anybody at any moment. I definitely tell people now how how proud of them I am, how much I appreciate them, how much I love them because it's too short not to and I think that's kind of I, I don't know if I've I've properly answered that question that is kind of going to be how this episode is going to go that is what was in the bank of my head for answering that question so on to the next one what were the most challenging moments in your recovery process so there are definitely a few that I can think of. Getting my infection in my leg was very challenging. I went and got my Elazarov frame removed privately and I was in quite a, a bit of pain the next day and the physios were a bit concerned that I wasn't going to be able to go home because... I was struggling to kind of get up the stairs and I had steps at home, so I needed to be safe and mobile to go home. However, I finally managed to get up the stairs and they discharged me. And then over the next two weeks, I gaslit myself and I just told myself that this is just my body healing, like the frame has been on for so many months and this amount of pain is normal and it wasn't. I was sitting in bed with my heart rate at like 140. I was sweating through my night dresses. Like, that wasn't normal. But I didn't want to believe that anything could be wrong. Being in the hospital after my leg started leaking fluid out of it was extremely, extremely challenging. I was hooked up to IV antibiotics for about 16 hours of a day. It was making me feel sick. It was making me feel tired. I didn't want to be alive. I didn't want to be doing this. I spent most of my time sleeping. I didn't really keep in contact with a lot of people. And it was a global pandemic. We had just gone into another lockdown and I was only allowed my dad to come in to see me and even at that he had to sit six feet away from me wearing a face mask he couldn't hug me or anything and being in a situation where you're thinking about potentially amputating your leg or having a torture device on your leg for another two years with this frame and all of these pins and having to literally grow pieces of your bone and you can't even get a fucking hug. Like, that was so hard and it was so infuriating because there was people, like, complaining that 
they they could like go to their gym and they would just get a membership for their granny so they could go see her because they couldn't do other things and it was like a wee bit like it was making jokes out of it but it wasn't feeling like it was very funny to me in that moment and then I also managed to get a little blood infection which in my medical notes is actually a serious blood infection uh, from the line that they were giving me the antibiotics in so that was also absolutely superb <laughs> can you tell that I'm trying not to swear as much what was that I think that is it for kind of that bit there is definitely more that I could say on getting my infection but I have discussed it a lot in other previous episodes so I don't want to repeat myself too much. The other very challenging thing was um, just the constant, the constant waiting, the constant delays. Every single appointment I went to, my surgeon would say, oh, I mean, I think it's ready, but it's not ready yet. Just, just needs a little bit more time. It'll be another three months. If I was more confident, I would take it off right now, but it just needs another three months. And it went on for over a year, being told that it was just going to be another three months. And do you know how soul-crushing it is to have this big thing on your leg that is literally stopping you from doing anything from living any kind of normal life and you wait three months and you do all of the physio and you do all of the things that you're meant to do and then you get there and they say oh I'm really sorry it's going to be another three months and you don't just do that once or twice it's five or six times in every single time I tell I told myself not to get my hopes up in every single appointment it broke my heart so I think that was definitely one of the one of the really challenging things about my journey wow I am actually pleasantly surprised I have only done the intro and two questions and I'm already at 25 minutes of recording and usually I'll edit I'll do kind of the sound make the video look okay and then I'll clip out my little ums and ahs and my my gaps and things like that but I think with a lot of today's episode I do kind of want to leave it a bit more raw a bit more uncut so if there is a bit more kind of silences and umming and ahhing and things like that please just kind of bear with it, like, uh, I might change my mic, <laughs> that's definitely staying in, <laughs> I was going to say I might change my mind when I'm editing it, but that was just too funny, so I can't change my mind, can't change my mind now, bitch, <laughs> so I've kind of skipped a few questions that I had here, because I've actually realised in my, my little extended answers that I've kind of answered those questions which I thought might happen which is why I got so many I think out of the 50 I've maybe picked like 20 here so um I can't remember what I've actually just said there my brain just went like paper shredder moment I said those words and then it was totally gone so I'm gonna go for what I think I maybe started saying but I don't know if I started saying it this is chaotic <laughs> the next question is share your thoughts and emotions during the pre-amputation appointment so I have done a full podcast episode on my pre-amputation appointment and the things that I asked and kind of the information that they gave me and the information that I would kind of give to people that are in a similar scenario to me and maybe consider amputation or 
anything like that, if you're at a point where you think you need something amputated, then going for a pre going for a pre amputation appointment is the best thing that you can do in that scenario. When I was going for my pre amputation appointment, I wasn't decided there and then that I was going to get my leg amputated. That was purely just for information. I just wanted to know all of the details. I wanted to be able to get to the end of 2022 and make an informed decision if my leg hadn't healed, if it was going to be just another three months. I couldn't do it like that again. So I had decided at the start of 2022 that by the end, three years of trying is enough and I want my life back. So in round about June or July, I went to this pre-amputation appointment and initially on the like lead up to it, like the week and the few days before, I didn't really think that much about it. Like I was kind of looking forward to it. I was looking forward to like asking my questions and getting the information and it wasn't until I was in the patient transport that I just started to feel really fucking sick. And we pulled up at Westmark, which is the, the rehabilitation centre. And I just, I had this really anxious, nervous feeling in my stomach. And I felt like I was going to burst into tears because this was never something that, this was never something that I wanted to happen. I, I didn't want to get my leg amputated. I had tried so hard to save it and to to make it work with the frame and I really wanted to see what my life would be like with the leg that I had managed to save so it was scary initially and then when I was kind of going through the appointment I was getting more anxious with the details that they were giving me I very much appreciated the fact that they weren't sugarcoating it. They weren't telling me that this is 100% a solution. You've been struggling for a few years. That's fine. We've got a solution. We'll chop your leg off and you'll be able to walk in six months' time. It wasn't like that at all. It was very realistic. It was very honest. They let me ask my questions. I got the answers to them. And then I went home to start processing because... Was this something that I really wanted to do? Was I better to take the chance and get my leg amputated and know that it was 25% that I would walk again? Or did I keep the frame for however much longer and deal with the chance of, I don't know about walking again because there's not a lot of information about fused legs that I could find online. There's not a lot of people that I was able to find that live with their leg being fused. So I had no fucking idea of what the future looked like in either scenario. And that's really daunting, to be honest. The next question I have here is... Can you share any specific moments of triumph or achievement in your journey that stand out to you most? Since I've kind of talked about the things that were challenging, I thought it was really good to have a moment to kind of chat about the good things that I've managed to achieve. And I think one of the things that has come into my head initially is after having my leg amputated being able to get home as soon as I did and I got my prosthetic within the first four weeks so I got my leg amputated at the end of August 2022 and by December 2022 I was down from walking with two crutches to one walking stick and I managed to take steps unassisted within the parallel bars. So I wasn't holding on to the bars. I wasn't holding on to anything whilst I was walking. And that is a really big goal for me. 
because I am not somebody that is ashamed of using mobility aids or things that make my life easier. But walking with crutches and walking sticks doesn't actually make my life easier. Like, yes, I can walk, but I can't hold things in my hands. Like, I can't freely move about. It is frustrating. I need to always think about what I'm also doing with the crutches whilst I'm thinking about what I'm doing with everything else. And I never knew if me walking unaided was ever going to be possible again. And I guess with the the issues I've been having with my prosthetic, that goal is looking a bit further off again. But knowing that I have been able to do it once after relearning to walk a good four or five times during this whole recovery process, knowing that I was able to take steps unaided, I mean, my prosthetics are needed, I guess, but taking steps unaided with all of my body weight, just doing it by myself, like, that is fucking massive for me, like, it is, it it makes me smile so much because I did it and I know that it's possible and I know that I can do it again, so you bet that you'll see me strolling about the streets. Another thing that comes to mind with something that is one of my my like biggest achievements is being able to drive again, being able to get back into a car and go out and do things and just live my life and have my independence and before uh, I had to kind of go down to, to Leeds to see Eleanor like a few weeks ago, I actually hit a thousand miles on my car which is mental to me like I didn't even know if I would be able to ever drive a hundred miles again never mind a thousand when I was having my leg fused I thought how am I even going to sit in the front of a car with my leg out absolutely straight I'm going to need to like sit across the back seat like I, I never knew if I was going to be able to do those things again and the fact that I had such a traumatic thing happen to me through a car accident and I have managed to get back in a car and drive over a thousand miles. You bet that is the baddest bitch move ever. Looking back at the past four years, what advice would you give to someone who may be facing a similarly char- tra- similar whoa 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 it's not going to be easy to say this looking back at the past four years what advice would you give to someone who may be facing a similarly challenging recovery journey eventually spat that one out so I think to anybody who is experiencing a similar journey to what I have in regards of having an Elazaro frame, struggling with a frame being on your leg, having to have your leg amputated, having a bone infection in any kind of way, even just kind of the trauma from a car accident and kind of recovering from that. I think the biggest thing that I want to say is you are not alone and you are never alone and whatever life throws at you in your recovery journey please keep going because there is a reason that you are still here today there is a reason that you have managed to get through everything that you have up until this moment and it is because you are meant to be here. So if things are feeling really difficult or you are struggling with your recovery, please speak to somebody, please reach out, (laughs) drop me a message, drop me an email, speak to a friend, record a video, record a voice note, do something, just speak to somebody. They might not fully understand 
what you are going through or what you are feeling and I know that sometimes it can feel really isolating but you have people that are in the background cheering you on and you fucking got this do what the doctor tells you and if what the doctor tells you to do doesn't feel right fucking call them out on it if you feel like something is wrong advocate for yourself or get in touch with an advocacy people like company charity that can advocate for you do not settle for anything less than you deserve because it is your life and it is just really worth fighting for wow (laughs) that Oh, call me, like, Gandhi. Is Gandhi, like... (laughs) Look at that motivational speaking. Oh, yeah, call me Gandhi. Uh, (laughs) Fine and dandy. (laughs) How far are we into recording? Because I feel like I'm losing the plot. Okay, we're 40 minutes in, which means that it is one more question and I've got quite a lot to pick from so what am I going to choose oh there's actually there's three questions here which are very good and I want to kind of try and I'm going to try and like speed run these so bear with me this might end up being an hour and a half long, but I am really going to try and make that not happen because I know sitting listening to my voice for an hour and a half probably could be a bit of torture to some people. So I really want to keep it short and sweet. Well, shortish. <laughs> um, so the first question that I have in this kind of set of three is um, How do you navigate the balance between remembering the trauma of the accident and focusing on the progress that you have made in your recovery? I think this podcast and what I am doing today is a bit of how I do that. I want to take time to sit and reflect on how my accident has shaped my life. I want to sit and reflect on the ways that I have grown and changed as a human being since I had my accident in 2019. (laughs) But I also want to scream and cry and be angry at the world because it's not fucking fair that it happened it's not fair that any of it happened and I just had to deal with it it wasn't something that I could have fucking done anything about if I had been going the speed limit I would probably be fucking dead so I did what I did and I survived and I'm here and that is something that I need to tell myself a lot of the days that I survived and I'm here and it's for a reason I guess kind of what I said in my last bit, like, a lot of the things that I said are kind of things that I say to myself and kind of when it came to the anniversary of my amputation, I wanted to have a day where I could go out and do something that I hadn't been able to do for so long and have a good day by the beach and sit and have a nice time but I took my journal and I thought about my feelings and I tuned into what was really going on around me and being present so it's trying to make room for the positives and the negatives and on the anniversary I do think that I'm going to go out and I'm going to try and do something because I've spent so many years being stuck in the house and just ruminating on it and I don't want to do that this year, to be honest. The next question is, 
as you approach the fourth anniversary, what role does gratitude play in your mindset and what are you most grateful for in your life right now? Gratitude plays a massive, massive role in my mindset. I am so grateful at a baseline to be alive, to have a safe house where I have access and I can use my wheelchair. I am someone who I think before never really thought of gratitude. I just kind of thought that everything was shit. But I do actually take time most days to sit and think about the things that I am grateful for in my life. And even on hard days, that is waking up, feeding myself, getting a wash, getting brushing my teeth, having having cuddles with Simba, having a conversation with my friend. All of these things are worth being grateful for. And I like to try and show my gratitude to people in my life. I listed off kind of some basic things that I am grateful for maybe on hard days. But as a whole, I am grateful for the person that I have become. I am grateful for having my voice and using it in a very powerful way. I am grateful to be surrounded by all of the love that I am surrounded by and all of the support that I feel from people in my life on a day-to-day basis. I am so grateful for my independence and my mobility in the life that I am able to lead and... I guess I am also grateful for this podcast, for me having a place to have an outlet for my feelings and I am obviously very grateful for anybody who is watching or listening to this or who has supported me throughout my my journey since my accident four years ago. Final question. How do you manage the expectations both from yourself and others as you mark this significant milestone in your recovery? I thought this question was really good because I think I've got pretty good at managing my expectations, to be honest. I've been having kind of setbacks with my prosthetic and I feel like, pardon the pun, but I've kind of been able to roll with it Like, I managed to just kind of be like, look, these are things that happen. It is very frustrating and annoying that I'm waiting about and it's not fitting and then I'm maybe able to wear it once or twice and then it needs to get adapted. Like, it is very frustrating and it makes me angry. But I do kind of have those expectations that I know that these things are going to go wrong and I knew that this wasn't just going to be a straightforward process that it was going to take work and I know that I am dedicated to putting that work in sometimes I do get a wee bit ahead of myself with things that I think that I am able to do and I kind of push myself to the max and my body then suffers for it Uh, So I do think that I kind of need to work on that a bit more, but sometimes like I don't even really notice that I'm doing it until it's too late. And how do I manage the expectations for others? Like, I think um, that's a tricky one because I do feel like I have a lot of people who are supportive when it comes to me walking again but this is kind of on my time scale this needs to work with me and when I'm kind of ready and capable to do it and I just hope that the people that are in my life know that whatever I want to do I'm gonna fucking do it like whatever it is whatever I put my mind to I will find a way to do it and I'll do it so if they have any expectations it should be that 
if I say I'm going to do it, I'm probably going to do it and don't doubt me on it. <laughs> um, but also something that kind of comes to mind is um, in the process of kind of getting a new wheelchair, I asked for one for my birthday and my Christmas, but they are very spinny. Um, my friend Lauren did set up a little GoFundMe for it. I am going to link that down in the bio. This is not me saying that I would, like, that you need to donate kind of any money, but if you have followed my journey and you have even a pound or two to spare, please put it towards me getting a new set of wheels. But when I was talking to my gran about that, she had said, like, oh, well, with an expensive wheelchair, like, are you not going to become more reliant on it? And it's like, I'm already reliant on my wheelchair. I was pretty upfront with people in my life that I never expect to live a life where I don't use my wheelchair because it is for my mobility, it is for my quality of life. I would much rather use my wheelchair in the house to get me about and conserve energy so that I can go out and do rock climbing or hill walking or something that is high energy with my prosthetic on. I would rather maybe take it out a few days where I wheel myself and I take the pressure off of my legs so that I can then do things with my leg and my prosthetic on. So it's one of those things where... I'm going to do what I'm going to do and if other people have expectations of me that I don't meet, then sorry, that's not my problem. <laughs> that is going to be it for today. I know I kind of do a little music transition between like the end of the podcast and the outro, but I can't. I can't really be bothered today, to be honest. Um, and we're kind of 50 minutes of recording, so I'm going to round it up. I really hope that you have enjoyed listening to this episode of The Cripple Chronicles. I actually think that this has been very beneficial for me to record and tap into some of the emotions that I spoke about today. It has felt very different just kind of sitting talking for the last 50 minutes and only having questions to prompt me and I think I've done pretty fucking well to be honest so I'm really buzzing about that. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode if there is anything you would like to see, please drop me a comment on YouTube. Leave a review on Spotify. If you would like to get in contact with me, please send an email to cripplechroniclespod at gmail.com. I have just realised that I didn't flex the socials and stuff like that. When I started the podcast, I have been using TikTok more. I actually managed to gain like 600 followers on TikTok. So if you are watching this video from, well, watching this, if you are watching slash listening to this from TikTok, Thank you very much. I appreciate you and I am so glad that you are here. Anyway, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Crapo Chronicles Pod. I'm going to go. There will be a episode about accessibility probably between Christmas and New Year. It might be after the New Year. So if it is, have a good festive season. I know that sometimes that's hard for people, but just get through it, try to enjoy the tasty food and then run into a new year and we can just continue on trying to be good people. Have a lovely day, month, year, Christmas, new year. <laughs> um, see you later. Bye!